Let's make a pillow from an old discarded shirt. I'm going to use a 16 by 16 pillow form. I'm going to flip this over to the back of the shirt and cut my square. I'm going to cut it 17 by 17. That gives me a half inch seam all the way around. And uh, so uh, I want it to be exactly the same size as the pillow form when it's finished. And I'm not going to worry about matching the plaids. Uh, I just want to cut me a a 17 by 17 inch square. So fight with the, get up underneath that underarm seam a little bit and then straighten it out so I can cut this off. So like measuring again, measure twice, cut once. So 17 by 17 was a half an inch seam. Hey there, it's Nathalie. Welcome back to my channel. I've kind of taken a little break through the holidays. Well, you, in YouTube land, who knows if it's holidays or not. But anyway, I'm glad that you're here with your first time. Yay, welcome, I'm so glad you're here. All right, so now we're gonna, we've got that cut. Now we're gonna flip it to the front. Now I've seen a lot of these where you just scoot down and you avoid the collar, but I really wanted to put that little piece of collar in there. And so I'm just gonna come up to the edges and find my, find my corners. Again, not worrying about matching the plaids. Make sure that the fabric uh, on the underside of the shirt is kind of out of the way. Uh, get everything all straight. Lay that out. It's going to catch a little tiny bit of the shoulder area, but I wanted the pocket in there and I wanted uh, some of the collar in there. Like, again, it's easier if you don't put the collar in there. You can just like scoot down, include the pocket, get the placket of the buttons but this is the way I'm doing this. So I'm going to cut this uh, front part of the shirt also 17 by 17. If you, you want to worry about matching plaids, we'll go for it, but I didn't worry about that. This project took me like 30 minutes to, from start to finish. My grandson had asked for this particular shirt that he remembered his pops wearing, so this was, a, this was a gift for him. And again, you, if you don't have to fool with the, using the collar if you don't want to, but I really want the collar in there. Let's get that out of the way. I'm gonna get a little bit of the tail of the shirt uh, to, to fill in that little open space right there. And I'll get that all adjusted the way I want it adjusted and get my head out of the way so you don't have to like See the top of my graying head. Get that all trimmed up. I don't need that whole big piece. And then I want to pin that in just to make sure that it's in the right spot. And I like the way that it looks. Get that adjusted. But I'm going to uh, open that collar up. I'm not going to stitch that collar down completely. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got all that taken care of. Now I'm going to open that collar up, unbutton it, and open it up, and I'm going to stitch on the underside. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that in place. And I'm going to stitch along that top between the band and the collar itself. Make sure I've got everything the way I want it. And I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. And I'm going to stitch right there in that little space between the collar and the, the collar band. And then just to make sure my spacing is right, I'm going to flip this around and then do it from the other side, the other uh, collar part, stitching towards the middle. And I was stitching on the fold line uh, that where his collar would have folded. And I still have room to go ahead and turn uh, the collar down and button it into these little buttons. It's there. And now it's ready to put together. So I'm gonna pin the right sides together. Now with this plaid, the way the shirt was, it really didn't have a right side or a wrong side on the back but it's, it's actually right sides together so that you can see the collar. And then I'm gonna be sure that I leave an opening at the bottom. Um, probably, since this is 17 by 17, probably a 10 to 12 inch open. It's got a pretty good size opening to get that pillow form in there. 
whatever you think you need. And I uh, am going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end, and I'll do a half an inch seam. I don't show you at the sewing machine on this, but anyway, I get everything all nice and pinned around, get it all straightened up the way that I want to, adjusted, and uh, I think he's really going to like this. I mean, it was one that last year I made for my sons. Uh, I made pillows for them out of some of their dad's shirt, and so this is this is Pops, same same man, my man. Anyway, so there's going to I've already stitched it. There's my opening, and I had stitched across that little placket at the bottom to make sure it didn't come apart. And so now I'm going to clip the corners. Have I already clipped it? Yes, I already clipped the corners so that it'll turn uh, easily and it won't have a bunch of bulk in the in the corners. So there's the corners all clipped off. Make sure you don't clip and cut your stitches. So now turn it right side out and poke out your corners. I just use my fingers to poke out the corners. This fabric is not very heavy, but if you've got heavy fabric, maybe flannel or something like that, you may want to use something else to poke your corners out. And now it's time to uh, get ready to stuff this. Got the corners all poked out. Everything's all adjusted. Grab that pillow. Takes a little bit of doing. Uh, you know, that's with it being that small. And, and probably I could have uh, done a, <clears throat> excuse me, an envelope pillow because uh, I had plenty of fabric enough to do that, but I just did this and then I'm going to whip stitch the bottom of it. Get in there like I want you to. All right, got it all done, got it all adjusted, and now I'm going to fold under half inch on both sides of that opening and pin that together. If I can fight with this pillow just a little bit, get in there, hold still while I put a pin in you. There we go. All right. Half inch on this side, half an inch on that side. Put them together. Sometimes I do a ladder stitch. That's in some of my other videos, but on this one, I'm just going to do a whip stitch. No reason, there's not a rhyme or reason to why I decide, but I just decided, I thought about taking it to my sewing machine, and but it was a little too puffy and I didn't want to fight with it. I just wanted to get this done and get it ready. The other thing I did is uh, I, I printed up some photographs of my grandson and my husband, uh, just the two of them together. I think I did about six photos and, and tuck those in the pocket for him. And he just cried. It was so sweet. He is, uh, he's uh, a teenager or tweenager. He's fixing to be a teenager. And it was just so sweet to see his little tender heart about this. All right, so I've got my needle threaded and I am ready to get this stitch. I hide, I always hide my knot. That's just something that I do, just so the knot's not on the surface of whatever it is that I'm working on. Bury that knot a little bit, and then I'm just going to just do what I call an easy whip stitch. I'm getting in the frame. There we go. So you can see what I'm doing. In one side and out the other. No ladder, no fancy, no decorative, just in and out. And about every... Mm, fifth stitch, fifth or sixth, it's not rocket scientist science or anything like that, I do two or three more stitches in, in, in one spot just to make sure in case, you know, they're getting a pillified or something like that, that those stitches don't pop loose. So let's see, I think I maybe one more and then now, I count it there, then do Oh, a couple of stitches right on top. You could put a little knot in there, but I usually don't. I'll probably just put just a couple of little stitches and then move on. Just work all the way to the end. Again, stopping about every five or six stitches and uh, doing that little double stitch in there. I hope y'all had a good holiday. Christmas this year was so strange. I mean, my gosh, 2020, it was, it was just weird. Anyway, go all the way to the end. And, uh, and so now we're ready to finish it off. I've got it all stitched up, fixing to show you. There it is, that's how it looks. And tuck the little pictures out. You don't see the, the photographs that I tucked in there. But anyway, 
uh, I just want to thank you so much for watching, for liking, subscribing. Be sure you hop over to my haul closet. I've got a bunch of free patterns that you can download. Give me a thumbs up. Share me with your friends. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.